If you would please join me now for our call to worship and invocation and opening hymn, As With Gladness, Men of Old. Arise, shine, for your light has come. We are called out of our darkness into light. Lift your eyes and look around. We rejoice in the gift of light. Come, let us worship the God of light and joy and peace. We come to kneel at the cradle of the babe, the light incarnate. Let us pray. God of promise and light, open our eyes this morning that we may see your light in the darkness. Open our hearts that we may perceive your promises of justice and righteousness fulfilled in the babe in Bethlehem. May we, like the Magi, have a star to guide us on our journey quest to find the one who will truly set us free. Make this time of worship bring us closer to you that the good news of the birth of light and love will transform our lives. Amen. Sometimes we feel lost and even consumed by darkness. We wonder if we are lovable. Our actions dim the value and worth of others and ourselves. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Sometimes we feel lost in shadows of unclear choices. Which way will lead to justice, to transformation, to peace? We are afraid to risk a step out, unsure of the path. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Today, we pray especially for those we name now silently or aloud or post in the comments section. Let us pray. In Christ, God has given us a new light, kindling unconditional love for us and showing a well-lit path to wholeness and forgiveness, to courage and clarity. Thanks be to God. Amen.
The scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For he observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it had been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the le- rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called out for the wise men and learned from the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent him to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me words that it may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left to their own country by another road. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God.
Our scripture lesson this morning tells us that after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, there were magi from the east who came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. Now, over the course of the last four weeks, during this season of Advent, we have been looking at persons who have helped show us the way to the mystery of Christmas, which we were able to celebrate together. And now, here again, as we begin a new year, on this Epiphany Sunday, we come to the Magi. So those who show us the way is not completely over, because today it is the Magi who show us the way. And my hope is that during this coming year, as we enter into 2023, that this story will stay with you as a guide to not only show us the way to the mystery of Christmas, but to be a guide for us into the mystery of 2023, which is suddenly upon us. You know who the Magi were. They have been in the Hebrew scripture, in our New Testament scripture as well. We know that Magi were trusted advisors to kings. And these Magi were persons who had prolific knowledge in things like mathematics or astronomy, medicine, astrology, alchemy, and also maybe most known for their dream interpretation. You remember the apocalyptic literature of the Hebrew scripture in the book of Daniel when they had a dream, the king had a dream, and the scripture tells us that he called the Magi in to interpret this dream. They could not do it. He called Daniel, and we know that story. So the ancient kings needed and relied upon the Magi for advice and discernment. And the scripture tells us this morning that these Magi came from the east. What in the time of Jesus' birth meant Medea, Persia, Assyria, and Babylonia. There are two words that I want us to look at briefly this morning about these magi. The scripture tells us that they had they said to the king that we have come to worship this newborn king. It's interesting if you were to study this word worship. It's used 60 times in the New Testament. And the context of this word really has nothing to do with spirituality, but rather it has to do with a level of intimacy or familiarity. It refers nothing specifically religious or even spiritual. Instead, it describes the entire spectrum of actions between initially noticing someone, perhaps in a far, foggy distance, to ultimately becoming one with that person. In translations of the New Testament, this verb is often translated to worship. It simply expresses the action of advancing towards someone without specifying at which level of intimacy the process is halted or for whatever reason it's halted. In other words, it, make, it means to make advances. <laughs> so when the Magi showed up with King Herod, they said, we have come to worship this newborn king because we desire to have a relationship with this new king. We desire a type of intimacy with this new king. And we know how Herod responded to that. The scripture tells us that he was disturbed at hearing this. The word disturbed is very easily translated simply because it is the opposite of being at calm and at peace. 
So when Herod heard that these magi had come to worship the new king and that they wanted to know this new king, they wanted to be in relationship with this new king, he became disturbed. The Magi show us the way to the mystery of Christmas and beyond by showing us their imagination and a spirit of adventure. Albert Einstein once said that imagination is more important than knowledge. And I like that. And I believe that. So the first way that the Magi show us the way to the mystery of Christmas and beyond is through their imagination and a spirit of adventure. I am in agreement with the late Rabbi Edwin Friedman in his book, A Failure of Nerves, says that our country, our institutions, and even our churches are stuck in an imaginative, imaginatively gridlock of relationship systems. Now he writes that there are three major interlocking characteristics common to any relationship system that is gridlocked around their imagination. These three things. The desire for an unending treadmill of trying harder, looking for answers rather than reframing questions, and either or thinking that creates false dichotomies and is a binary way of viewing our world. Friedman writes that it is the lack of imagination that causes this type of gridlock in our institutions or maybe even in our own family. We all know what trying harder means. I have a plaque in my office that says, Stupid got us into this. Why can't stupid get us out? <laughs> and I think of that sometime in some of the relationships that I have been in. He also says that sometimes we're in this emotional gridlock because we're always looking for answers or new answers rather than asking new questions. And finally, this idea of either or thinking there's one way or another. But the Magi show us a different way. The Magi show us through their imagination and adventure how to come close to the mystery of Christmas. How to come close and intimate with God. It is through our imagine, imagination and wonder. They took a risk in following a star. I would guess that they gave each other room to make mistakes, but they knew that their adventure was about being in relationship. They show us the way through their imagination and, and adventure. And finally, the Magi show us the way through their courage. I don't know if you have thought ahead much to 2023 and what this new year is going to be like for you. I know that you're very excited for next Sunday to be here and to welcome your pastor and I'm excited for you in that as well. My prayer for you is that you may enter into this new year with great imagination, a sense of adventure and courage for whatever mysteries lie ahead. Finally, I want you to do something for me this morning as we close. Since we have been speaking a lot about those who have shown us the way to the mystery of Christmas and now today into this new year, I would suspect that there are many persons that have helped show us the way those we've named during Advent, or persons that you know. So I want you to do something for me 
as we close this morning. I suspect it is many persons that have helped show us the way, but for today, I would like for us to take the time to remember at least one person who has invested in you. And as we close our time together, we'll be given the gift of a silent minute. And in that moment, to think about those who have helped you find your way to the mystery of Christmas. Some of them may be with you right now. Some may be very far away, and some may even be in heaven. Wherever they are, if they have loved you, encouraged you, wanted what is best for you, and helped show you the way to the baby lying in a manger, they are still right inside of you. So for the next minute, let's take silence to honor and remember those, maybe it's just one person or two or three people, who have been with us all along the way. One silent minute. Whomever you have been thinking about, imagine how grateful they must be that during this Christmas time, in this silent time of Christmas, during this time when we enter into a new year, imagine how grateful they must be that you remembered how important they are to you. Amen.